Before there were Spotify playlists or burned mix CDs, there was the mixtape, a carefully curated sampling of songs that could convey a mood, a theme, or sometimes a message to a fellow music fan or even a romantic interest. Sadly, kids today may never know the joys of Base 60 math or having the radio on and pressing record at just the right time for when the G DJ stops talking and the singer takes over. Mixtape is also the name of the latest book from Vancouver's Fiona McQuarrie, who has been writing about music in one way or another for over four decades. And she joins me now. Uh, Fiona, were you a big uh, mixtape fan back in the day? Oh, heck yes. I still have a uh, Tupperware container uh, full of mixtapes that I made, uh, both from recording on the, off the radio and taking tracks off records. Yeah, I, I had a lot of them. Now, the, the full title of this book is Mixtape, 21 Songs from 10 Years, 1975 to 1985. Besides being the heyday of the mixtape itself, uh, what made you focus on this period in particular? Uh, the initial impetus for it was as a sequel to my previous book, Songbook, which covered uh, the decade before. Um, but this was also the decade when I started writing about music professionally. So it really resonated with me because I saw a lot of acts that are mentioned in the book live. I interviewed several of them. Um, and it was just a really exciting time for music. There were so many different styles uh, on the top 40 at any given time. And the technology for music was changing too. There were mixtapes, <laughs> there were cassettes, there were eight tracks, uh, there was vinyl. Uh, so it was just a really lively and uh, vibrant time in the music industry for fans and for musicians as well. Now, as you mentioned, you were working as a, a rock critic and a music writer at the time. So I was heartened to see uh, Vancouver's Doug and the Slugs and Too Bad show up on this list. Uh, did you ever cross paths with, uh, with the late Doug Bennett? Yes, uh, because the Doug and the Slugs were just starting their rise to national prominence uh, when I was working at the Sun. So yeah, I interviewed Doug several times and uh, I also saw the band play live several times and it was very exciting to see a, a band from Vancouver that was so unconventional uh, have that much success and I think they're one of the great underrated bands from Vancouver. I, They've sort of acquired this reputation as a party band, which is fair enough because they're a lot of fun to see live, but they, they they deserve so much more credit than that because the songs that Doug wrote are so deep and so intricate while still being very listenable and clever. I, I think they deserve a lot more credit than they've sometimes gotten. Another song that sticks out, of course, is uh, Running Up That Hill by, by Kate Bush. Were you uh, surprised, encouraged, uh heartened to see it get a, a second life of sorts thanks to uh tv's stranger things i was completely surprised i i have to point out that i i had that song on the list for the book long before <laughs> stranger things came along uh because i'm a huge kate bush fan and uh it was really interesting to me uh from someone that followed her back from the early 80s uh to see a whole new generation uh understand that song, even in though it was presented in a very different context than it originally came out in. And I will say that I don't watch scary films or scary TV shows. Uh, so I actually had to get a couple of friends to tell me what was going on in that scene where it was used. Uh, but I did uh, pluck up enough courage to watch a bit of it online. And I was really impressed with how, how well it was used and how well it fit the context in that particular show. Now, it's the kind of song that sounds both of its time, but still unique enough that it could have been released today. Would you agree? Very much so. Yeah, very much so. I think it has such a strong backstory. I mean, uh, Kate Bush originally intended it, as the lyrics sort of point out, as this idea of uh, a romantic couple uh, being so close to each other that they change into each other and uh, using that as a way to deal with their the problems in their relationship. And that's a universal theme. I mean, everyone can relate to that. Uh, not maybe not the changing souls part, but but the idea of, of being clo that close to someone that you can do that, but still having problems with them. I think that's a really relatable theme. What do you hope readers get out of mixtape then? Um, I hope that they will be open minded enough to read the chapters that involve artists that they might not know or that they think they dislike. 
and maybe learn a bit more about them and their song and maybe appreciate them a bit better. Um, <clears throat> one thing, excuse me, one thing I tried to do in choosing the chapters was the list of chapters went through about, oh, I don't know, 20 inter iterations or so, uh, was trying, just trying to give a sense of the scope of music and all the different styles that were, that were out there uh, in, in that decade. Um, there was a lot going along on a lot of really interesting acts going along and someone like Kate Bush like uh, you know I wrote that chapter before Stranger Things came out and then I had to revise it but there's someone who was a fairly major artist in the uh, mid 80s and then partly through her own choice she didn't want to do a lot of the publicity things and she just wanted to be a mom and stay at home with her son and her husband uh, who kind of disappeared and I hope that maybe some readers will come across an artist that they might have heard of somewhere uh, but they don't know a lot about and learn more about them and maybe start to appreciate the work that they did through uh, through reading the book. As you mentioned this is your second book focused on uh, as I would call it the, the micro histories of the popular song. Uh, <laughs> are there plans for a third? Um, that's something I've been thinking about. I kind of feel like I've sort of reached the chronological end of the era that I feel most comfortable writing about. So if I was to go into the next decade, it would be a bit of a stretch for me. Um, but I do like this format and readers really seem to like it as well. Uh, I've had people say to me stuff like, this is a great beach book because I can take it to the beach and read a chapter and then, you know, <laughs> lie in the sun for a while and then read another chapter. And I really appreciate that. And it, it does seem to be a format that's accessible and that people enjoy. The name of the book is Mixtape, 21 Songs from 10 Years, 1975 to 1985. It's available from New Haven Publishing. Thanks again to author Fiona McQuarrie. Thank you, John.